and I'm using the random man pup scene uh, from their challenge and I'm also going to be using a HDRI which I've already put in the source images folder for you. The first thing that you're going to need to do is um, set up your camera. So I've already set up my camera. Um, I've chosen quite a wide angle lens and I just want to focus on all of the scene in my render. You can get as creative as you want, but for me, this is what I'm going with. And all I've done uh, in my channel box, the camera selected, is I have right clicked and lock selected. That means that I can't accidentally move my camera once I've set it up to the perspective view. I also, before I start doing anything with the light and want to go to my render settings, make sure that my renderer is render man. And then one thing that I want to do is um, change the image size and I'm just going to go for something like HD 540. Whilst I'm first lighting, I want my renders to be as quick as possible uh, so I can test them in the shortest amount of time. The way I'm going to choose to light this scene is I'm going to use a HDR image and we're going to create a Pixar dome light. So a Pixar dome light is this little sun here. And you can see you've got a spherical wireframe now. And if we go to the attribute editor, our Pixar dome light by default just gives us a pure white color. So I'm going to go to my camera and I'm going to click render and this will open up it so I'm just going to pause while this happens and so my render is now finished and we can see we've got just a scene is lit with a constant white light this is it so this is render man's render window a couple of things that I like to use in it are if I go to window I like to have the catalog open which is um, every time you render you can go back and preview previous versions and also the inspector so it doesn't really become that useful till you are uh, tweaking your render settings but I like to have it open anyway it tells me um, sort of what size I'm rendering my um, integrator samples and most importantly the render time and so I'm just going to close that now so we're actually going to apply a HDR image to that with your dome light selected in the color map, we're going to click this little folder. I'm going to choose maybe five o'clock and I'm going to choose the uh, beach text file. So we can see here that it is added our color map. And if we go to our perspective view, there is our image applied to our dome light. Now, can't change the scale or the translation of this. Maya treats uh, environment lights, dome lights as sort of infinite. So the only thing you can do is change the orientation uh, so that your source of light, main source of light, which is the sun, is coming from a specific direction. So what I want to do is just use my rotate tool and rotate this and I want to kind of angled sun coming through my window. I'm going to look back through my camera, press render again, open up it, and pause while that renders. And so this is what's happened now that I've added my HDRI. Instead of having light coming from every direction, our main source of light is the sun and we can see that streaming in through the window. Now one thing that we can also see is that it's illuminating this table here. And that's because we don't have a wall in our scene. Depending on what you want to be there, that might be okay. It might be large glass patio doors. But for me, I want that to be a wall. So what we're going to do now is use portal lights, which tell our dome light where to channel the lights. Go back to perspective. And if I select my dome light again and go to the attribute editor there is a portal section so I'm going to toggle that down and what I'm going to do is click the checkerboard button and if I press W for my move tool and F to frame we can see I've got a little 
portal light here now it's absolutely tiny because my scene is massive so i'm going to scale it up we've got sort of a rectangular shape with an arrow which is the direction that the portal light is facing so i'm going to scale this up and position it at my large window Do another test render. So now we can see that I have lost the light that was coming from the side, but I've also made my scene very, very dark. What I'm gonna do is add a second portal light to this window, and then we're gonna look at a couple of render settings to brighten that up. I'm going to select my dome light again and make a second portal light and just put it into position. So now that I've added both of the portal lights, what I'm gonna do is adjust the exposure of my dome light. So the exposure um, going from zero to one um, is essentially doubling it. And if we do a test render, if I skip back to my previous, you can see the slight difference that that portal light has made. And then I've also doubled the exposure. So my light here is a lot brighter and as such, it's kind of illuminating the room, although it's still very, very dark. So what I'm gonna do, is I'm gonna go to my render settings and I'm gonna go to the sampling tab. And in my integrator, I'm gonna choose max path length and I'm just gonna knock that up to two which means that the rays that are sent from the camera can now bounce again and do another test render i've doubled the max path length and if i compare you can see that that's brightened up my scene quite a lot especially in sort of the areas above the top what i'm going to do now is actually add some more lights to the scene i'm going to treat it like there is a um, doorway here. Um, I'm going to right click on here and choose a Pixar rectangular light. And I'm gonna scale it up. So I'm gonna pretend that I've got a doorway. There is some light coming through from a different room. I'm going to leave the intensity at 1 and I am going to enable temperature. I'm going to change it to 3000. I'm going to do a test. So I added a area light and I set the colour to sort of a tungsten style bulb and this is the um, result that we got. So if I compare that to when there was just the environment and portal lights, it looks like there is a a light just off to the side rather than a doorway so I'm gonna spend a bit of time um, tweaking possibly the position of my area light um, the color temperature and the intensity this is kind of the render that I've settled on and I'll just tell you what I've got so I've got an area light here which is kind of acting like almost a doorway I've got my portal light for each window I added another portal light on this side of the room and another little window. And then I decided to open the fridge door and I've got an area light inside this, which is casting um, a really bright light out here. So you can see adding a couple of area lights in there is really sort of still a dark scene, but it's brightened them up a lot. And another reason why it's dark is that we've got no reflective surfaces in here. It's all one gray color. When we start adding sort of so we added white to the ceiling, for example, and a colour to the floor. That will all change the brightnesses. But it is very noisy in the shadows. But this tutorial is just about setting up some lighting. Uh, the only thing I'm going to show you how to do now is have it so that we can actually see a dome light through the window. And so in order to do that, if we click on our portal light, it's really easy. We go to visibility and check camera visibility. So I'm going to do that for my two environment lights and then another render.
So by doing that, we can now see the image of our Pixar dome light through the window. This may or may not be something that you want to do. You can always composite it in um, after you finish rendering it. So there are many other different types of lights in Render Man that you can have a play around with. Um, so that's it from this tutorial.